you agree? I ain't saying that I'm better than anyone. But who better than me? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another volume of the Fem Files. Now I'm going to jump straight into this one and I want to talk about a very young um, lady, brand new contender to the featherweight division, I'd say. Um, a lady with unlimited potential and someone that, you know, with now the proper backing could definitely be a contender moving forward. Now, I'm talking about 20-year-old Sophie Ellis. She's German-born. Uh, she's raised and based out of Germany as well. Before, uh, sports a professional record of 8-0 with one KO. Uh, first KO actually coming from her debut fight. I've seen a couple of her fights. Um, the first one was the Adina Kiss fight from the World Boxing Super Series um, from 2020. Um, and the last one was the fight against Eva Cantos from last month. Now, um, if you don't sort of recognize the name of Eva Cantos, or maybe you do, it's because it was she was the second to last opponent that Ellie Scottney fought. And there were the rumors of whether um, she was, in fact, a biological woman or not. I'm not getting involved in that. Now, with regards to Sophie, her style sort of mirrors to me quite a bit of Katie Taylor's style. Subsequently, I actually heard that she um, is a big admirer of Katie Taylor. So it does kind of show in the way that she throws her punches, the type of combo she will throw, sort of that, that one, two, one, um, followed like by the right, sort of the right hook or the two, one, sort of the two, one uppercut, the two, one, um, left, the, the two left hook kind of thing as well. It's, um, she's very, um, she's very quick of hand and foot. Um, she doesn't just have sort of quick hands. She also is able to get her feet into range as well in and out so it's not a case of she's firing numerous shots and falling over a front foot normally she does she is able to get her feet into range to to make sure that she remains balanced in fights um she also has a very not herky-jerky but very sort of jittery upper body like constantly moving keeping her head um, you know, sort of always on the pendulum, never, never keep staying stationary enough to sort of get hit clean. Um, she's currently, as I said, signed by, she's signed by Wasserman Promotions at the moment, uh, but she's also signed a management deal with um, Anthony Joshua's 258 management for her international rights. So expect to see her on the zone internationally. But probably, you know, Wasserman within sort of Germany, uh, the UK, etc. Um, yeah, um, let's see. She's going to be turning 21 in November, I believe. So there's absolutely no rush to sort of throw her into any world title contention. She could realistically be one of those um, girls that has a record of, say, 16, 17 and 0 before like going for a world title because there's no there's absolutely no need to rush her they like said 20 years old um she doesn't doesn't have to become a champion anytime soon because obviously once you get there then you have to stay in and around that level she's building um apart from the adina kiss and the eva cantos fights there's to me not many other recognizable names sort of on her on her resume that i know but just got to keep building, quite frankly. Um, but yeah, um, if you've not seen her fight, I would I would recommend doing so because she's very, very much a fun fighter. But she's also in quite a dangerous division, um, you know, because you do have the likes of uh, Amanda Serrano sort of as a unified champion there. You've also got Sarah Mahfoud. And then you've got Eric Cruz as well. So, you know, the routes to the titles at this point in time are not exactly going to be easy. But like I said, she's got many, she, she's got many years to go. So there's absolutely no reason for her to, to, to be rushed into any of those situations. But yeah, that's, um, that's Sophie. So good kid. Definitely got um, high hopes for her moving forward. 
So next up, I'd like to talk about an Australian boxer. Now, they are officially a flyweight as of now, but they did start their career more at bantamweight. So they've gone from 118-ish pounds, well, started off, I guess, at Super Bantam in the, in the debut. So let's say it went from 121 pounds, now down to 112. That boxer is Taylor Robertson. Now, she's a pretty credible amateur for the Australian, uh, Australian demographic, um, the highlight of which being a bronze medal in the Commonwealth Games, I believe, back in 2018. Um, Taylor is, I believe, 20, 23 or 24 at the moment. Um, sports a professional record of four and one. And one good thing I will say about Taylor's career is she has not been given like pushover jobs in her opening sort of five fights. She's very much been in there with credible opponents. And if you remember, a couple of, uh, a couple of volumes back, I had said that Shannon O'Connell was the prospect killer, or has become that of recent. Well, Taylor Robertson was one of the prospects that she did um, hand her L to. But the fact that Taylor and her team did call for that fight extremely early in their career meant that they showed no fear of the possible repercussions and whether it was a win or a loss, it would be a learning experience and something that would be taken into, you know, sort of into the memory banks, into the skill set moving forward. Subsequently, from that particular fight and the, the fight afterwards, they've decided that they can actually make lighter weights and they can, you know, sort of gain some sizable advantages in a division such as flyweight. They can make it safely, comfortably. She's young enough, um, you know, not overly, you know, sort of not overly stripping off too much weight to the point where it could be like a, a dangerous, uh, you know, sort of a dangerous practice. So now that's now the new division they're going to go. Maybe feeling that the uh, bantam weights and the super bantam weights might just be a little bit too big. So going down to a weight they feel more comfortable at. Uh, now Taylor Robertson's got a very much uh, sort of an amateur type of style still. Um, there hasn't been a huge transition into sort of a professional, uh, professional dedication, but she's very much a, a pure boxer um, from what I've seen. I wouldn't class her as a boxer puncher or any type of pressure fighter. She's very much uses her feet well, uses the ring, is um, in and out, doesn't throw multiple shots on, on the inside, sort of will get off one, two, maximum three shots in a salvo and, and get back out to safety so as to make sure that she uh you know doesn't get caught with anything doesn't get caught with it sort of anything silly um i would i'm trying to remember how many knockouts has she got i don't think she's got any ko's at this point uh let me double check no I've, she's got one who did she get the knockout against uh I think, I think a bit like Sophie Ellis, she, she, her very first fight. Yeah, that's right. She got the TKO victory in her first fight. So again, we're sort of setting the pace for her um, professional career. But ultimately, again, it's, you know, sort of the women's game. It's hard, it's hard to, to get people out of there, you know, especially if they've got any semblance of technical abilities, you know, defensive capabilities with those two minute rounds. It does get, it does get a bit tricky. Um, but no, uh, if you haven't seen Taylor, Taylor Robertson, I would suggest giving her a watch, uh, especially if you're into, into the female boxing, but she should be, I reckon within two to three fights, she'll probably be highly sort of highly competitive in that flyweight division. Um, and could definitely be looking to pick up belts, especially as the premier champion of that division currently is Marlena Sparza. Um, I definitely feel like with one or two more fights of seasoning, she could definitely do some work down there, but we'll see for the future. But yeah, Taylor Robertson, check her out if you haven't before. So last but not least, 
on this volume of the fem files i would like to give it up to a young lady that i have a bit of a vested interest in you could say i'm a bit biased towards and that would be none other than catford zone ellie scotney now yes i have a slight bias because we are from the same borough and she actually lives about five minutes down the road from myself with that being said ellie sports a professional record of 4 and 0 at the moment with no knockouts and i believe it was ebony bridges that coined her um feather fist and subsequently sometimes i'll shout her out on twitter <laughs> with the same moniker but she embraces it at this point in time um the knockouts haven't come yet but she has faced very um good competition in her first four fights now she hasn't been as active as maybe i would have liked or possibly even she would have liked um since turning over as a pro back in 2020 but she's faced um a good uh, you know sort of good competition in her first pro bout she fought bet Connolly, who you know in terms of at that even though now she's she's considered and understood her role as maybe that journey woman gatekeeper type you know to make sure that these you know these girls in the game have got what it takes to progress at the time when she faced ellie that was not her mindset her mindset was i feel that like i can do something in the in the game so she came into that fight very game and sort of very ready to fight Second fight was against uh, Miley's Gangloff, who Ebony Bridges did subsequently have some trouble with when she fought her. Um, Ellie boxed the rings around her quite comfortably, um, although it must be said that Ebony did cite a, a hand injury from the second or the third round in that fight. So I'll put that disclaimer out there. In her third fight, she faced Eva Cantos, who you may have heard me speak about previously so won't get into that um i saw that fight i was actually well okay i was on my way to the arena while that fight was happening and i happened to catch the last two rounds live um at the o2 when that fight was occurring and you know ellie sort of won fairly comfortably but again um I think towards the end probably made it a little bit harder than it needed to be and the um the last fight was against Jorgelina Juanini which I also saw the last round of in person <laughs> making my way to the arena it seems to be a pattern and I know that she's not happy I always seem to be catching her fights in the last you know the last round or two but I'm I'm aiming to to make it from round one of your fight on saturday i <laughs> i i will get there um but yeah uh, in terms of style um ellie's very much a pure boxer um although working with um shane mcguigan i think she's now looking to sort of more transition from sort of stick and move and box around the target we're, you know not necessarily looking to get hit as much i think she's now maybe looking to set her feet a little bit more and maybe have a little more mustard and a little more spite on the punches um shane's very good when it comes to uh body mechanics and you know sort of maximizing the um you know sort of the attributes you have um to you know especially on an offensive capacity so I feel as if um, Ellie is trying to transition from a pure boxer to a, a boxer puncher in style. Whether that happens or not, only time will tell. But um, pretty de uh, decorated amateur within sort of the British scene as well. Um, ABAs and um, competed in the World Championships as well. So it's highly seasoned in that regard. Um, as I said, as a pro, while it's only 4-0 currently, soon to be 5-0 after this weekend, she is taking on very, very good and tough and durable opposition in her first four fights. So there, while you could say there may be, they are learning fights, they're like advanced stage learning. Her at 118 would be an interesting proposition, but... Um, the super bantam weight divisions will probably be where she where she caps off i i predict um 
but yeah in like i said in terms of the style um there's a bit of a transition occurring at the moment so i'll be very keen to see how she gets on um saturday against someone like um cecilia roman who is a very tough credible opponent who only recently just lost her championship um to ebony bridges which is about what two months ago i believe so she's definitely of you know of sound world world championship level and ellie cannot take this fight uh she cannot take this fight lightly and can't think oh well because ebony beat her i can beat her that she's got to do a job on her and i would definitely employ a sort of hit and not get hit type type uh you know dynamic and i'm assuming the um the fight is i believe this one's at super bantamweight i need to i, I think it's at 122 um but it will definitely set a statement if ellie can dispatch of her in a much better fashion than sort of ebony bridges did but time will tell uh, anyway i will leave it there i hope you sort of enjoyed the quick little breakdowns of the few fighters that i did speak of and if you haven't seen them before please you know give them a look they're you know they're pretty decent pretty solid and will you know i'm sure they'll be grateful for the support but for now let me leave it there that's another episode or volume as i will call it of the fem files down and look out for the next one probably being two or three weeks got an interesting idea for that one but we'll uh yeah we'll cross that bridge when we get there thanks for watching